There are thousands of lakes, rivers, reservoirs, and streams throughout North America that host fabulous fishing for anglers familiar with the waters in their region. And then there are bodies of water that have a national reputation, and for good reason. When people speak of Lake Superior, images of vast open water, big waves, beautiful scenery, and big fish come to mind. Lake Erie, right now there are walleyes everywhere you look. The Mississippi River, from its humble headwaters in Lake Itasca to the Roaring River in Louisiana, its long winding flowage is known for life-sustaining water, commerce, recreation, and a myriad of catchable fish. Leech Lake in central Minnesota has earned its stripes as a walleye fish factory and has long been a traditional destination for families recreating all year round. Big fish time. Eagle Lake in Ontario is a mecca for musky anglers and it rarely disappoints. And massive reservoirs like Lake Oahe, which stretches over 230 miles in length and over 2,000 miles of shoreline, which hosts catchable populations of salmon, catfish, walleye, giant pike, crappie, and world-class smallmouth. Today we are in the heart of Minnesota on a lake that has earned its reputation for producing lots and lots of fish. It's a perfect size, not too big, not too small, but just right. And it boasts tons of walleye, muskie, pike, crappie, largemouth, and what we're chasing today, smallmouth bass. Let's join James Lindner and Jake Wallace as they discuss Lake Vermilion Bass. This lake here is about as fun as it gets. Oop, there's one right there. Look at that one right there. There's one. See him right there? Ooh. Are we coming up on the hump here? I'm just, yep, I'm sitting. I've sort of moved around on it. I was sliding around on it and then I'm. That did not take long. Jake and I are on one of our favorite bodies of water, Lake Vermilion. You know, over the years, we've actually spent a lot of time up here uh, shooting television shows for walleye, smallmouth bass, muskies. I mean, it's one fabulous lake. Got him. Got him. Woo! Look at that thing! It's a monster! But what we're going to look at is uh, this, this uh, the Lake Vermilion smallmouth bass fishery throughout the summer months. It's the second week of August, and it's prime time for getting on big numbers of brown bass like this one here. And that was the first spot, the first drop. <laughs> now, now that's what I, I call bass fishing, beautiful fish. It's an awesome one, Jim. Yeah, we'll get her back in the water. we got to get to work. Look at that beautiful fish. All right, so what's really unique about these smallies is how much they'll move throughout the year. You know, they start out in early spring, they're up in the shallows, these back bays, they're spawning, they're eating food. And then later in the year here, we're in August, these fish have moved out to these like main lake reefs and points, and they'll really cover this whole lake moving around. We're marking them too on the bottom, I can see them, we're 13 feet. We're working a rock pile, a spine that comes out to the main lake here. And these fish are sitting, really relating right to the point of this rock pile. As Jake was saying, you know, like all the fish in a big lake like this, these fish make some pretty dynamic uh, moves. The interesting thing is, is the largemouth bass in this lake stay in those big uh, shallow backwater bays where the smallmouth will make pretty dynamic movements. These fish are moving literally miles, and a lot of the, the fish now are really concentrated, you know, along these deep water basins, main lake rock, rock reefs, big complex rock reefs is where the small mussels will start gathering at. Boy, it'd be cool if we could catch them uh, cranking. Would be really cool. Got him. Feels like a pretty good one. There you go. That's a good one right there just picked up a crankbait and started ripping it fast right over the tops of the reefs. You know, when you look at these big reef systems, what's really sort of intriguing about smallmouth bass is that they move up and down off these reefs dependent on what they're feeding on. They get up on top and feed on crayfish. Then sometimes they dump off the outside edges and they'll feed on, uh, in this particular lake, it's got a lot of ciscos and tulabies. 
and then they'll be feeding on minnows out there. So it really sort of dictates, you know, what area they're fishing and what baits you want to throw. Come here, buddy. There's a, a good one. It did not take long. He hit a, uh, a DT-8, which is a really nice bait. It's a really nice size crankbait for smallmouth bass in the fact it's a little bit of a smaller profile lure, you know, smaller body bait, but it still runs pretty deep. Come here, buddy. Look at that. Pretty fish. Little beauty, little fat football. These fish, that's one thing. Aren't these things pretty? Oh, so I mean, pretty. they're so, so cool. They're so red in color in this lake. Look at that thing. They're just gorgeous. They're pretty fish, though. Oh. You know, I, I caught this first fish on a drop shot, the second fish on a DT-8. You know, when you look at in the boat here, Jake and I got a lot of different baits tied on. We have one thing that's sort of important with these baits, each one of them moves in different location in the water column. Starting in the top, we have top water baits. We have a prop bait and a popper. Going to the mid depth level, we got crank baits, jerk baits, uh, swim baits, and then we have bottom bouncing baits such as a, uh, uh, like a Ned profile, a uh, drop shot rig, yes. and a tube. So it's it really dependent. So we're mixing it up. We haven't fished here this year for smallmouth bass. So we're sort of in a little bit of an experimental mission trying to figure out where the fish are concentrated on these reef systems. Oh. spitting out crawdads. You can see he's right up on the top of the hump. He spit out some crayfish. He's a fat little guy. You know, one thing that's sort of intriguing because, you know, it's late summer and a lot of times you get on these big reef systems and the fish are moving up and down and what you have to do is get at the right depth level and you'll find a number of fish concentrated at that depth level. This top of this hump right here is about, what is it, Jake? 12? Right, about 15. 15 on the yep. top of it. So maybe just give us a, a good starting point. We get two on drop shot, three on drop shot in about that exact same depth level. That Wait, look how fat Man. that little chunk yeah, is. They don't, they don't miss a meal here. <laughs> no, they don't, do they? Look at that thing. Oh, there we go. Boy, he's Got a little smoked. fat, so. Yep. There's nice. a better one. He is a better one. I thought you were hung on a rock I there, Big I was Good. hung on a rock. What? He came and took it out. That's what we're looking for. It looks like a better one. Yeah, there. definitely. Got some shoulders. Oh, oh yeah, nice fish. Beauty, that's what Vermilion's all about right there. It's one thing nice when you get out in these reef systems, they're not alone. You know, you get out there and there's schools of these fish out here. Wow, that's a better one there, yeah. big boy. Man, they're so thick here. They yeah. just do not miss a meal. And actually, uh, James there, he uh, took my weight off. What? He grabbed it and uh, took my weight. It was, I was hung up on a rock and this fish came and grabbed my bait. And, uh, Broke my weight off, but what a beauty. Yeah. Awesome, all right, that was a beauty. Now, we've been catching these smallies on a number of different baits today. I mean, we've caught them on crank baits, minnow style baits, we've caught them on drop shots, we've caught them on tubes. And what we've been doing is kind of trying to imitate all the different available food sources here on Vermilion for these smallies. So, they're eating crawdads, they're eating tulabies, they're eating mayflies in the summer. So they have just a bunch of different options to eat. And essentially what you want to do is match the hatch. And that's what we've been doing. It's been paying off for us. Come here, buddy. Big Bite made this uh, Smalley Smasher a number of years ago. And it's a really cool bait for uh, drop shotting for smallmouth bass. But they make a variety of different profiles that'll, that'll work for drop shotting. This bait here has got a real strong smell to it. You get her back into the depths. Big Bite Baits has a long history of making some of the best soft plastics in the world. They make a myriad of shapes, sizes, colors, scents, and tastes for everything from panfish to pike. But today we're primarily drop shotting for smallies, and there are a few shapes that stand out among the rest. First is the jointed jerk minnow. The minnow profile with the segmented body gives a subtle fish catching action 
and the lifelike color patterns tempt even the most suspicious smallmouth. Next is the Shaking Squirrel, which is tailor-made for drop shotting. It's manufactured with Big Bite's softest plastic formula, and it puts out an incredible lifelike action in the water. And finally, what we're using today, the Big Bite Smalley Smasher. This soft bait is outstanding for drop shotting. The solid head allows you to nose hook it easily. The thin spine allows small movements to create big action and the rib body and flat tail displace water to get the attention of unsuspecting smallmouth. And the enhanced scent and taste profile of this little morsel means when fish bite it, they simply don't let go. And that translates into more hookups. It's that simple. Now obviously there are many other baits that will work on a drop shot, but this is a good example of some of the types of profiles we use. You know, Lake Vermilion is a really fantastic fishery you know we just happen to be fishing for smallmouth bass but you know it's a world-class musky fishery walleyes largemouth bass actually then the largemouth are really pretty widely distributed there's more in the west side of the lake but they are really all over the lake any of the shallow water weed bays actually have some populations of largemouth there's actually a lot of whitefish in here a lot of people don't fish for them i actually am a big big on catching whitefish and even crappies but it's a, it is really a fantastic lake it's a, like a little uh, i know a buddy of mine uh, billy rosner and he calls it it's like a little mini lake of the woods you know what i mean there's so, so many islands underwater structures you can fish no matter what the weather conditions are because it's up uh, oh wow whoa <laughs> i thought i might have had a real one there oh. And one thing it is, she is sort of a rocky sucker, I do know that. So uh, the weekend actually before this, my brother and I came up here musky fishing. And uh, we had a little different plan when we got here. We threw out, I don't know, half a dozen crawfish traps, uh, set them out for maybe three hours, came back and they were just chock full. And we had a nice crawfish boil later that night. So there's just a bunch of bounty here in Vermilion. It has a bunch of things to offer. Feels like a good one. Decent fish. Oh yeah. Nice smallie, Jim. Oh, you got one? Oh, yeah. Does he have any buddies? Let's see, hopefully. It was a pretty light bite, though, to be honest. He just kind of tapped it there. Nice fish. The drop shotting we are doing today is pretty darn basic. It's a hook, line, and sinker operation. At the bottom of the dropper, we are using a tungsten drop shot cylinder weight. The tungsten allows for extremely fast descent, and the cylinder profile affords us a relatively snag-free delivery system in this rocky environment. When it comes to the specific hook we are using today, it's a VMC NK Finesse Nico hook in a size 2. It has an adjustable fluorocarbon keeper for versatile rigging. The Pro's Choice 3 degree offset point increases hooking rates. And this wide gap forged long shank hook also has a smooth epoxy resin on the hook eye to prevent the line from slipping through. It is hands down the best drop shotting hook, whether you're nose hooking, threading, or Texas rigging your soft plastic and rods, reels, and line are specific to this presentation. For this drop shot fishing, we're fishing with a pretty specific rod. This is a 610 Victory, St. Croix Victory, but it's a medium light power rod. And that means it's, it's pretty parabolic, so extra fast action, so it's pretty sensitive. But the biggest thing, it's, it's softer in the fact that you're fishing with relatively light line. I got 10 pound Suffolk 832 braid and then a eight pound Suffolk fluorocarbon leader. But you need, that medium light is really nice for fighting bigger, bigger fish with light line, no question about it for this type of, and you like that sen sensitivity. You know, up on these deep water rocks like this, a lot of times we're not casting the baits out away from the boat. We're almost completely vertical fishing and it's not only to isolate where we see the fish on our electronics, but more so 
the fact to minimize getting hung up in the rocks all the time. As you can see with the shorelines here, you draw a cast and start dragging sinkers on the bottom through here, you get snagged constantly. So for a lot of deeper water fishing situations or a lot of different situations on Vermilion, we do a lot of vertical fishing where you just touch the bottom up and down or when you get in those shallower rocky areas, what you're doing is swimming baits over the rocks and not bottom bouncing per se. But you'll notice a, a lot of lure losses. Now Jim also talked about his rod line he's got spooled up and I also have a Daiwa here spooled up and this is a Revros LT3000 size. Now this is a great option. Um, this 2500 to 3000 size is great for finesse fishing. The whole Daiwa line's got super smooth drags and as you can tell by the smallies we've been fighting today, you need it. You really just can't go wrong choosing a Daiwa. You know, electronics is obviously a big part of deep water fishing like this. First off the map to find these big underwater reef systems. Then we drive around them with the, uh, the big engine and identify, you know, key spots, the tips of points, isolated boulders and any fish. We put our waypoints down and then we actually go back and start fishing over these spots. One of the newest types of sonar technology is something I have on this boat here. It's called Mega Live in which what a lot of anglers, you may have heard it uh, being spoken about, it's forward looking sonar. You can see in this particular condition, my head is pointing that way. The forward mega live is pointing at a direction like this. So what I'm gonna do is take my drop shot rig and do a short pitch. I actually see the bait dropping to the bottom. In some cases, you see, you're seeing the fish actually move towards the bait. In some cases, you see the fish leave the, from the bait. And it's really sort of interesting. I'm not really exactly what you call a mega live expert, but by no stretch of the imagination. I've only had this on my boat probably for about six or eight days now on the water. But I do know one thing, this is technology unquestionably will change the uh, fishing in the future. I mean, unquestionably. I mean, once you look at it, you can get your head around it. What you're actually seeing, it's pretty amazing. It really is. At this time of the year, you'll get on some of these spots and they'll be loaded up. I mean, there'll be a lot of fish in one spot where we'll get them successive uh, drops. Like fishing on any big body of water, you got to respect it and keep one eye on the weather at all times. And Vermilion is no different. The weatherman was spot on today and the wind picked up to 20 miles an hour with gusts over 25, which kind of blew us off the big water. Lucky for us, there's lots of islands to hide around out of the wind. This is a good time to drop the Minn Kota, put it on 40% and let her rip. During the summer like this, there's oftentimes a great shallow water bite. That didn't take long. No. It won't be long here now. In the next couple of weeks, the water temperature is going to start dropping, and all these fish are going to be dead around these shallow flats gathered together in that deep water on those deep water spots that we were fishing earlier today. Oh gosh, look at how tough he is. He's got Mr. Bass X really bent over, <laughs> doesn't he? It's a good one there. Ooh, look at that guy there. Sort of hiding in the sun, in the shade underneath the dock to sort of relax and, oh, come here. Wow, look at that thing. No question about it. When it comes to really fabulous, fabulous smallmouth bass fishing, no question about it. Lake Vermilion is one of the top choices in, in Minnesota. And you know what? We actually have a lot of really, really good smallmouth bass fishing. But this, this, this lake here is about as fun as it gets. You know, last year I did a closing on this little booklet titled, Let's Talk, Sign God, by Gordon McGee. In your quiet moments, I know you think about me. That's from God. This booklet is talking about how he is constantly trying to touch your life through people, circumstances of life, situations, good and bad. He's there for you. 
and it is such a simple read. I love that we had a great, great response to it. So Gordon gives me a call and he says, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to give this book away free to anybody that wants it. All you have to do is mail your mailing address, email your mailing address to let's talk sign God at gmail.com. Again, that's let's talk sign God at gmail.com. Gordon will take this book, put it in an envelope, and mail it right directly back to you. Nothing else. There's going to be no other things in here, no other sales things to upsell any, none of that. He's giving it to you free, free. And if you haven't read it, I strongly suggest you read it. I guarantee you, you will be blessed by it. And it is such a simple, simple, simple read, but quite amazing. It very well could change your life. And it's free because the information in here, it's priceless. Hey, from all of us here at The Edge, you have a great fishing season. We'll see you on the water.